Hey guys, it's Mikkel again and let's jump right into this topic of supplements and weight loss. I know there's so much misinformation out there when it comes to supplements and what actually works. Well, I'm here to let you know what actually works in the fitness industry. I know there's people out there that think they could take some sort of magical pill that could miraculously let them lose weight or even these detox and fit teas or even some sort of magical juice that you could drink that could allow you to lose 5 pounds in a week. But guys, that's not how weight loss works. Don't waste your money on this BS. There are no shortcuts to weight loss but being in a caloric deficit. And on top of being in a caloric deficit, these supplements that I'm going to mention today can further aid you with weight loss and in some cases, or in most cases, it could even help you gain muscle. So if I were you, I would really be using these supplements no matter what your fitness goals are. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. In no particular order, the first supplement is... Creatine monohydrate. What is creatine? Our bodies naturally produce creatine from three amino acids, arginine, glycine, and methionine, and is then stored in our muscle cells as phosphocreatine, where it is then used for energy. However, though, our bodies don't produce enough of it to see the full benefits from it, especially when it comes to training, whether you're trying to lose weight or gain muscle. And I kid you not, this supplement has been studied for several decades and has been proven to be the most safe supplement in the market. So anyone that thinks it's unsafe or that it's an anabolic steroid or even that it damages our kidneys, that is far from true and I want you to debunk these false myths from your mind. We can't ingest more creatine from consuming fish or red and white meats, but evidently the creatine we get from these products still aren't sufficient to get the recommended dosage to help you with weight loss or muscle gain. For example, one pound of raw beef or salmon provides us with one to two grams of creatine, and this is raw by the way. When it's cooked, it actually loses 5% of its creatine value. So we would have to be consuming so much meat at the end of the day to actually reach our recommended dose of creatine. What should our daily creatine dosage be? It is recommended that we have five grams of creatine per day. It does not matter what time of the day you take it or what brand it is as long as it's creatine monohydrate. And by the way, there's no need to take more than five grams, you would just be wasting your creatine. So if you were thinking of doing that, just take your five grams and nothing more. So how does it help you with training and losing weight? Well guys, in simple terms, ATP is our body's energy currency. And when you supplement with five grams of creatine, it actually helps us to increase our phosphocreatine stores, which allows us to produce more ATP which results in us working harder because more energy. So if you do supplement with creatine during weight loss, this will allow you to perform a lot better in the gym. For example, this could be you lifting more weights or even doing more repetitions, and this will indirectly lead to you burning more fat and even helping you to maintain your muscle mass. During weight loss, you want to maintain as much muscle mass as possible. Therefore, creatine would be a huge benefit. Lastly, I'll just like to say that if you do start supplementing with creatine, it takes around one month of taking five grams per day before it actually starts working. Or you can do a loading phase where you take 10 grams per day for one week. Then you start taking five grams every day after that, and it should start working a lot sooner. However, though, when it does start working, you probably won't realize a significant difference when it comes to your performance and energy. I know how people think. Just because you don't realize this, that does not mean that it is not actually working. Just know that there will be a difference, especially in the long run. On to the second supplement, and I think this should be an obvious one, and that is protein powder. During weight loss, protein is king. Protein has a higher thermic effect than carbohydrates and fats. What does that mean? That means it takes more energy from our bodies to convert protein into body fat. Additionally, protein is the most satiating macronutrient. What does that mean? That means it is more filling than carbohydrates and fats. And during weight loss, the more full you can get when you're eating lower calories, the less likely you are to binge or overeat on your diet. This is why you should make sure to have a protein rich diet during your weight loss. You also need to make sure you're consuming enough protein to increase muscle protein synthesis and reduce muscle breakdown. After all, you wanna make sure you keep as much muscle mass as possible. And just like creatine, if you consume enough protein, it can actually help you build muscle during weight loss, and that's a plus. How much protein should you be consuming during weight loss? Well, it all depends on your weight and your activity level. 
but in general you should make sure you're consuming one gram per pound of body weight during weight loss so let's just say if you're 220 pounds you should be consuming 220 grams of protein however though it's really tough to consume 220 grams of protein from food and this is when supplementing with protein powder can help you reach your protein intake goals and to get this out of the way no a protein shake is not a meal replacement it is simply a supplement to help you reach your protein intake and you can have a protein shake anytime during the day it does not matter if it's before or after your workout anytime during the day is fine as long as you reach your daily protein intake so there's so many different protein supplements on the market the main ones are whey protein whey isolate and casein protein the main difference between whey protein and whey isolate is that whey isolate goes through more processing which results in a product with little to no carbohydrates and fats and higher protein content. So for someone on a keto diet, I guess it would make more sense to get the whey isolate but otherwise there's not much difference in terms of the macronutrient content between the regular whey and whey isolate and the whey isolate is more expensive and it doesn't even taste that good in foods and smoothies. For myself, I just stick to the regular whey protein which maybe has 2 grams less of protein and has a tiny bit of carbohydrates and fats that actually makes it taste better. Lastly, casein protein is a slow digesting protein whereas whey protein and whey isolate is a fast digesting protein. So it would make more sense to have casein protein before bed so during sleep it can actually reduce muscle breakdown. Honestly, if you have the money and you want to go the extra mile, you can invest in a casein protein as well but you're not going to see a significant difference when it comes to your results. So the third and last supplement on my list that can help you achieve weight loss is pre-workout. Pre-workout is simply a caffeine heavy based product with other stimulants in it. In case you didn't know, caffeine alone is a stimulant that can help you burn fat. So even if you have coffee, it can help you burn fat. But I know people like to throw creams and sugars in their coffees which offset this effect. The reason why pre-workout made my list because not only does it contain caffeine but it contains other beneficial stimulants that can allow you to train harder and perform better which can lead to you burning more fat. Just like being on creatine, pre-workout would allow you to lift heavier weights or even perform more repetitions which are all factors that are going to allow you to maintain your muscle mass when losing weight. The only difference between creatine and pre-workout though is that pre-workout is more of a short-term product whereas creatine is more of a long-term product and you should also make sure you're having pre-workout in moderation whereas you should be having creatine every single day. I personally love taking pre-workout when I don't feel as energetic and I need that extra push so I can actually perform well in my training sessions. Additionally, I make sure not to take pre-workout after 2pm because you don't want it to affect your sleep. Your sleep is very important when it comes to weight loss. So guys, if you're taking pre-workout, make sure to take it early in the day if you need that extra push in the gym. Okay guys, that's it for supplements today. But I want you to remember, you can take all these supplements in the world. If you are not in a caloric deficit, you are not going to lose weight. These supplements are not shortcuts for you to lose weight. But when you're in a caloric deficit, these supplements could further aid you with weight loss. Popping up is two other videos that could help you. And till next time, peace.